Hi everybody, I'm Julie Brown and welcome back to my channel. So we're very early in 2020 at the moment, in fact it's the 2nd of January today, so that's how early we are. And I guess at this time of year, as business owners, our thoughts turn to what the next 12 months holds for us, how successful we're going to be, what we're going to develop, what we're going to get up to, who we're going to meet, and for a lot of us too, it's about how am I going to get seen? How am I going to create more visibility? When it comes to it, that's what's important. If we can't get any visibility from anywhere, then it's unlikely we're going to get too many clients. So that's definitely at the front of many people's thoughts. So today I just wanted to talk to you about different platforms that you might choose to look at in 2020. And the reason I'm doing this is because I know from my own experience and from talking to other business owners that organic growth on Facebook and Instagram is definitely trickier than it used to be. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't work at all. If your content's good and you're consistent and you're spending a bit of money then you're still going to grow those platforms, you're going to grow your business on those platforms. But it is it is harder than it used to be. You know there are algorithms in place now. Facebook's had it for a while, Instagram's caught up and it just seems a little bit more of a grind to get some growth on there. So what I wanted to do as we're headed to this new decade is to just talk about three other places where you could possibly get some growth if you put a bit of effort into them. And I think that's definitely worth doing. And the three places that I'm going to talk about are YouTube, Pinterest and LinkedIn. Now some of you might be on this places already and if so great I hope it's going really well for you if not then I'd definitely have a look to see whether one of these or all of them are something that you could get involved with. As small business owners we don't always have the, the budgets needed to buy advertising on places like Facebook and Instagram and although you don't have to pay for advertising it is harder to get seen if you don't. And they do work really hard for you, Facebook and Instagram, if you do pay for adverts. But we're not all in that place all of the time. And that's why I think it's worth looking at other ways of growing your visibility. For me, it's about return on investment. And that's not just about money. It's about effort, time and effort. And the three platforms that I'm talking about now, you can put some effort in and get a good return on that effort and that time. But it's not a massive effort, you know, it's something that you can do relatively easily with just a bit of thought and away you go. So let's go through them in turn and I can tell you what I think about them. So let me take LinkedIn first. Now a lot of you will probably have looked at LinkedIn or even be on there and I think there's a lot of misconception about the platform still, that it's somewhere to be professional and stuffy and just be on there when you're thinking about looking for a new job or promotion, you want to sort of tell people what you're capable of. And I think in the past that's what it was used for primarily, for people who were employed fully as in the corporate world to, to showcase what they're capable of so that if somebody was looking for a new employer then they could go to LinkedIn and maybe headhunt or you can go on there and look for a new job and people can look at your LinkedIn profile before you apply. But it's not like that anymore. There's so many business owners on there now from all walks of business who are using it to great effect. Now you can use it in two ways. First is to post on there like you would on Facebook. It's sort of how Facebook used to be you know, a few years ago when it was much easier um, to use and to get the visibility you wanted and deserved. And you can just post about things you would post about on, you, on Facebook. So things about your business, stories, social proof, funny things, you know, LinkedIn has become one of the places where you can, you know, ask people what their favourite LP was when they were younger, what was the first concert they went to, what sort of car did the dad drive, all those sorts of sort of engaging things that people want to engage with but aren't overly related to your business but it just gets people engaging. So it is a very different place. So you can go on there do a bit of that, a bit of posting. You can also write articles which are more like blog posts and you can 
things that have been on your blog can be then put onto LinkedIn at a different time, so you're not wasting that content. And you don't need to do that that often, really. Probably twice a month, um, more if you want to, but twice is fine. Posting, then I would say to try and do that three times a week if you can. You can overpost on LinkedIn, actually, so three times a week is, is probably a good um, number. So articles a couple of times a month, post three times a week. You can obviously repurpose things from elsewhere, from all the posts that you've done on Facebook or Instagram, just at different times so that it doesn't all look the same, and off you go. It's really easy to be seen on LinkedIn, and it's really easy to get connections, and it's easy to go viral too. It doesn't take a lot of comments on your post for LinkedIn to recognise that that's doing well and to um, show it to people. So that's different now to Facebook and it's definitely worth a try. I certainly get clients from LinkedIn. I probably, you know, every month I get people inquiring about my services. And of course, once you've got an inquiry, it's up to you to change that into a, a solid uh, booking. But at least you're getting the inquiries. So the next place I wanted to talk about is YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, then hello. That's uh, what I'm up to right now. And it's a great place to be. And it's a great place to be for all sorts of reasons. I think this year video is going to continue to be massive. People are turning away from YouTube. It's still massive. It's a massive search engine. You know, the people on there all the time searching for a whole range of things. And that includes a lot of business stuff. A lot of business owners on there doing videos, how-to videos and inspiration videos and things. And if you're not on it, then you should think about getting on there. Now, of course, it takes a little bit of time to set up your YouTube channel. You need to know a little bit what you're doing, but it's not overly hard. You just, you know, you can Google it, you can go on YouTube and look at how to set up a YouTube channel and it will all be there, I'm sure. And I know some people are not very confident about being on camera. And I was in that um, in that place when I first started. I really hated it for a little while. But it's just like anything. You practice and you get better at it and you feel better about it. There are ways to be on video without having to have your face in there. And I actually did a video about this a little while ago, so I'll link to that below. So you can have a, a peer at that and see if you can get some ideas on how to get started without showing your face, because that will help build your confidence. But because it's a search engine, again, it's not that hard to be found. Yes, you've got to use tags and hashtags sensibly and effectively to get people to fall onto your um, content. But because also people can subscribe and you can um, email out the videos, there's all sorts of ways to get people to interact with your videos that have been on YouTube. It's, you know, it, it is a, a driving force behind a lot of people's businesses. And if you're not on there, you could well be missing out. So take a look and see what you can get up to on there. I can't argue that it takes time. You have to be consistent. You have to be, you know, have some perseverance and some patience. But the more you do, and the more regularly you do it, then the better it will be for you. So just think about that when you're going on there. Just give it your best shot. Be as consistent and hardworking as you can, and you'll definitely reap the benefits. And then we've got the lovely Pinterest. Now, again, a lot of you will have had a look at Pinterest. You may have been on there to find some inspiration from, from Pinterest for things like, you know, you're building a new conservatory and you want ideas about how that might look or you might go on to look at the latest handbags in the fashion news you might be using it for inspiration for crafting all those sorts of things and I think people still think that's all Pinterest is about but it's not business owners are going big time on there and again it's not hard to be found there are all sorts of things like um, a program called Tailwind that help you with that you can join groups people help each other out to be seen you can schedule through Tailwind it's not a hard platform to be on. Again, I did a video about that a little while ago. I'll link it below, just giving you more in-depth information about Pinterest. So that might help you make the decision to be on there. But it's certainly something that you would want to look at. There is no algorithm to argue with. In fact, Pinterest make it so much easier to be seen than anywhere else at the moment. They're not wanting you to fight with any algorithm. They do want you to be using it. And yes, you can pay for advertising, but you don't need to. And the reason that Pinterest is so fantastic is that it links back to all your stuff. So if you've got a blog or a vlog or a podcast, every pin you put on to Pinterest you can, will have a link that goes through to 
that place, that podcast, that blog, that video. So you're forever driving traffic back to your your places, really, which you know not a lot of the other platforms do. So that's definitely a big, big bonus and something not to be missed. I have, so there you have it. Those are the three things I think you should think about for 2020 if you're struggling a little bit to get organic growth through some of your other efforts. Even if you don't do them all, have a look at the one that feels right for you and see whether you can give it a go and look at the figures, see what happens, be consistent, be strong with it and I'm sure you'll find some good results in there somewhere. So I hope you found that useful. I'd love to know what you think. Stick any comments below and I'll get back to you. If you're using these platforms at the moment to good success then let me know. If it's not working for you let me know. Maybe I could give you some hints and tips on how to make them more effective for you. Of course if you like what you're hearing and what you're seeing on this channel then please subscribe. I would love it if you would do that. Just hit the subscribe button wherever that is on the screen or below and um, if you want to know when I've uploaded a new video then obviously uh, use the notification bell. Give that a ping and it'll tell you when I've uploaded, which at the moment is every Thursday. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Have a great week.